In the present, Zarak is telling his story to some children and a man. The story begins with a poor family from Edirn. Mustafa, the father, rushes into a room where his wife, Nurtan, is going into labor. The father is not allowed to get in, he remains on the other side of the room yelling wordly but that's not helping, so one of the women in the room makes him stop, by slapping him in the face, and it works. After a while, a little girl is born and both parents are full of joy. At the same time, a wealthy woman called Dilruba is also in labor but is not going well. Nekla, a woman with a patch on her eye is there so she calls Mr. Hackey, the woman's husband, to tell him that they need a doctor to save the mother and the baby, but Mr. Hackey suggests letting her die, he only wants to save the baby. Unfortunately, none of them survive but Mr. Hackey only cares about the inheritance of the child. He explains that the heir will be given $200 million when married. But if something happens to him or her, the money, the properties, and everything will be donated to charity. As there's no baby that is what's going to occur, but Mr. Hackey has a plan. Nekla is sent to a slum and talks to the guy responsible for the loss of her eye. The man is surprised to see her because he had left her in a dumpster. But Nekla is not there for revenge, she gives him a job. After listening to the lady, this man calls a little boy called Zarak who goes immediately there. Back in Edirne, the family is in bed, Mustafa tells his wife they won't run away anymore, and Nurtan, with the baby in her arms, replies that they now live for the baby. She places the girl in the cradle and sings a lullaby for her. This family lives in a sunflower field, they work there so the next day while Mustafa is doing his job, asks his wife to bring the baby to a swing in the shade, because it's too hot for her. The mother, a bit upset carries the little girl there, she leaves her in the swing and kisses her forehead softly. However, Nurtan doesn't realize that there's a suspicious car there. Zarak is in it with the man who orders him to take the baby, the mother sees him but it is too late. She, her husband, and their workers desperately run towards the car but they can't reach it, so the thieves escape with the baby. The mother falls to the ground destroyed as the little Zarek watches her from inside the car. Then, the thieves give the baby to Nekla and she gives a suitcase with money in exchange. But when she is coming back to her car, Zarek chases and gives her a bracelet that belongs to the baby, but the woman only asks for his name and pat him in the head. Once in the car, Mr. Hackey sees that the baby has a spot on the chest. He worries that the newborn is sick but Nekla explains it is just a birthmark. Next, one of Hackey's men takes the man's life and throws a handful of bills at Zarak, who is left there alone and confused. A new and different life starts for Zarak, he watches the family from the distance, feeling their sorrow. Although people from Edirne and even the baby's father have lost faith in seeing her again, Nurtan refuses to give up and is still waiting for her return. Zelis, the girl, lives a fake life in a luxurious house where she is imprisoned, whereas the boy grows up in the slum streets. The girl is brought as a dreamer princess and Zarak raises himself as a thief. Zelis believes that the initial ZC in her birthmark has a hidden meaning. She is sure that those letters are the initials of her Prince Charming and her savior. A grown Zelis is in her room with her friend Meltem to discuss this idea of the Charming Prince, but although Zelis radiantly smiles when thinking of the idea of meeting him, her friend discourages her. Then, her adoptive father, Mr. Hackey, arrives with a new girlfriend who dislikes Zelis. Years pass by and the arrangements for Zelis' engagement are done, a celebration with many guests, and a large feast it's been carried out but from the window, Zelis observes everything with a disappointing look in her eyes. Meltem notices this so she goes to see her. In Zelis' room Meltem says how beautiful she looks but Zelis claims that the celebration is not even close to what she has always dreamed of. At that moment, we know that the friends are going to be sisters-in-law, because the fiancé is Meltem's brother, Semel. Her friend tells the girl that she must forget the Prince Charming issue so takes her necklace off. After that, her aunt necklace shows up and tells Zelie she must go downstairs for the ring ceremony, and the girl shows displeasure, but accepts. Now in the ceremony, Zelie's is alone sitting on a chair crestfallen. The fiancé's father, Selim, realizes this, so angrily heads to his son and orders him to spend time with her. But Selim is more interested in drinking with his friends and his brand new wristwatch. At the same time, Zarak is being chased by a dangerous guy in the woods. He succeeds in avoiding the guy and a group of police officers, who are watching the ceremony entrance. Zarak manages to slip inside the mansion, walks around, and seizes the opportunity to steal some things among those, the necklace of Zelis with the initials CC. But at that exact moment, Zelis comes back to her room frustrated by the engagement situation. She lies on the floor and complains about not having met her love yet, Zarak hears everything and looks at her while hiding. However, Zelis sees him so both of them yell scared. Zarak jumps out of the window to run away but he leaves one shoe behind. When the girl takes the shoe and can't believe her eyes, Zelis sees the initial ZC written on it, she is speechless for a while but then can't stand her joy, and while she shows Meltem the shoe shrieks delighted. Suddenly, her father appears and asks if they are okay because a thief has broken into the house, they look at each other surprised. 
Zarek gets away with the murder. He arrives at his place and checks the stolen loot. Apart from Zeli's necklace, he has also taken Selim's watch. In Mr. Hackey's house, Selim keeps on complaining about his stolen watch, while his father blames the officers for the intruder but the guard, Kenan, seems to be paying more attention to Melton which angers the man. Zeli's does not want to show the shoe, otherwise, they'll look for Zarek but the policeman says they know where he is. That draws Zeli's attention who is willing to go there and find her Prince Charming. In the neighborhood, Kenan and the two girls are in the patrol car. Meltem tries to persuade him to go away so that the girls could look for the thief. The police officer dismisses the lady's offer but he receives a call of duty on a different street, so he has to go and leaves the girls there. Zelis and her friend go to a bar and asks if someone there has lost the shoe. Zarak is there but he does not want to be recognized so nobody answers. Therefore, Meltem offers 1,000 liras to the shoe's owner, so an endless line of guys tries on the shoe but it does not fit on anyone's foot. The girls leave the place and phone Kenan, but after they make the call, two thieves show up and force them to give the 1,000 liras. Fortunately, Zarak has seen the whole scene so he appears and rescues the girls. However, Zelis is still nervous because of the situation, hits Zarak with her purse, and both fall. Lying on the ground, the girl sees her necklace on Zarak's neck and remains surprised with wide open eyes. Kenan arrives rapidly and Meltem grabs Zelis but she does not want to go. At Zelis' home, she tries to convince her friend about the necklace, but Meltem is fed up. She claims that they got through a dangerous situation, and reminds Zelis she is now engaged to Selam. On the next day, Zelis decides to go to the neighborhood again but this time disguised as a boy. Once there, she bumps into Zarak and she gazes at her handsome crush in amazement. Then, she follows him to his place, and there, she sees he plays with children and gives an old lady some medicine. She soon realizes he is not just a simple thief, he is more than that and she likes what she sees. Zelis continues to follow the boy through a dark passage in which she finds poor people. She feels scared because she is not used to it, but that does not stop her to accomplish her goal, and keeps on her way. Zarak takes a towel and goes to have a bath in a separate room, so the girl reaches Zarak's bedroom while he is not there. Before long, Zarak comes back so Zelis hides somewhere in the room, and waits until the boy is about to get dressed to get out of there. Unfortunately, when she decides to flee, she smashes her face against a wall and falls fainted. Zarak is confused and does not understand what's going on. Sometime later, Zarak wakes her up, and they share a honey look but as Zelis has been out for a long time, she remembers she has to come back home. She rushes outside the room but then she comes back to nervously claim how handsome Zarak is and leaves. The guy chuckles with tenderness. Back home, Zelis realizes she does not have her mobile phone. At that moment, her aunt Nekla appears and asks if she has met Selim, to which the girl replies she hasn't, but begs not to tell her father. Nekla agrees with the warning that she can't be seen in those clothes by him, and orders her not to do it again. Zelis hugs Nekla smiling and goes to her bedroom where she lies in bed joyful. Later, Zarek visits Mustafa and Nurtan, helps with fieldwork, and gives them some of the things he has stolen. At night they enjoy a delicious meal prepared by Nurtan, and they have a good time like a family. When it's bedtime, Zarek sees the woman feeling sorrow for her lost daughter, he says he wishes to bring the girl back to her mother. The following day, Zelis goes to see Zarek at his place again, but he is not at home so the girl comes back. However, she listens to her phone ringing inside the room, so she breaks into and answers the call. The one calling is Semel, who invites her to spend the night with his friends drinking all together. He also offers to convince her father. But Zelis does not find the invitation appealing and makes up an excuse. She says she is having a stomachache and she must not leave home, plus hangs up leaving Semel talking alone. When Zarek returns home and finds Zelis sleeping on his couch, he wakes her up and asks why is she so interested in returning his shoe. The girl does not answer and asks for his name, the boy answers, and when the girl says her name is Zelis, he claims that now he understands the initial in the necklace. Zelis smiles and explains that the initial is because of him. But Zarak is totally confused, the girl then shows her birthmark, and explains that she was named after the Z on it but she strongly believes, that although it seems like a childish dream, those initials are in close to the heart. Zarak thinks is just a coincidence and asks what is going to happen now she has found him. The girl claims that they could meet or become friends. Zarak reminds her she is engaged, to what Selys replies that she is just engaged because in that way she could start a new life. Nevertheless, she does not like her fiancé and she also adds that her future father-in-law is her dad's business partner and the police chief. Zarak gets nervous and wants her to leave but the girl promises not to hurt him, and affirms that she would be happy if he keeps the necklace but she wants something in exchange. Zelis then finds the bracelet she had as a baby, but Zarak refuses to give it to her. When was about to kick her out, he sees the guy who chased him some days ago but this time with his buddy. They escape to the roof while Zarak explains to her he had taken something from them, but he can't give it back because he has already sold it. The thugs find them, so Zarak and Zelis run and they start a chase. They jump off the roof and start fleeing through the market, dodging people and stands. The guys follow them unceasingly, but the boy and the girl hide in a nook in a dark corridor, 
and the guys cannot find them. Zarek then asks her if she still wants to meet him, and the girl nods repeatedly while smiling. Now Zelis and her friend Meltem start to hang out with Zarok and his friends. The young couple play games, take pictures of them, and spend a lot of time together. We can see how the girl and Zarok enjoy every time they are together and become closer. Even Zelis steals the headdress of Semmel's car just to give them to Zarok. One afternoon, after a car ride in a dump, they stop and the girl asks about the boy's family but Zarok remembers what happened to the man, when he was in Edirin as a child and remains speechless. Zelis insists so after a while, Zarok answers he was brought up where she found him. Then, he tells her the story about a man who died right in front of his eyes and thought was his father. Sometime later he knew that guy wasn't his dad and no one knows where Zarak comes from. Zelis sympathizes with him, she tells Zarak that she had lost her mother too and the only thing she has is a deadbeat father. The girl then claims that maybe, all that happened to join them together. But Zarak doesn't agree, he asks her to go home and explains that they come from different backgrounds and she will get hurt being with him. Zelis refuses to give up, she seems to be in love with him, she does not see any difference between them and states they are alike. That night, Zarok drives to Zeli's neighborhood, and explains he can steal just a tiny part of what she can see there. Zeli's, without saying a word, gets out of the car and heads straight to a luxurious Jaguar car, steals a little piece of it, and comes back to the car celebrating. Zarok can't believe his eyes, he goes in reverse and they leave the scene. Later that night they are in front of Zeli's home, she asks Zarok if they are going to see each other again. The boy says nothing, just chuckles while looking at her. The girl softly caresses his cheek, and slowly kisses him while gently touching his hand. With a wide bright smile, Zelis gets down of the car and heads to her house while the boy admires her. When entering home she bumps into Nekla and Mr. Hacky. Her father with a disapproving look asks her where she's been, but before the girl can answer he gives her a mistreatment, once and over again. In tears, Zelis expresses that she is no longer a child and that he cannot keep her from the outside world. She adds that he is forcing her to do things she doesn't want to do and begs him to please listen to her. However, Mr. Hacky ignores his daughter's requests, asks Nekla to take her inside, and says she will not be allowed to leave until he says so. Zelis runs to her room and Nekla goes after her, but the latter is stopped by Mr. Hacky who tells her that from now on the girl is her responsibility, and with a threatening tone suggests Nekla do her job well. The next day, Selim, Nekla, and Mr. Hacky are discussing Selim's behavior towards Zelis. His father blames him for not having charmed her but Mr. Hacky affirms that is due to someone else circling around the girl. Selim gets upset and claims that after all, she is his fiancé. At that moment Meltem shows up, and Selim and her father rebuke her to ask if she knows something about the boy. At first, she wants to keep her friend's secret, but she is persuaded by her father who says that if something is happening, they should know for Zelis' own good, so she confesses about Zarak and shows the picture she took of him. Then, Meltem adds that Zelis is really obsessed with the birthmark issue which calls Nekla's attention. The woman asks to see the picture and she soon knows that Mr. Hacky's plan can be ruined by the presence of this guy. Nekla goes straight to the slum accompanied by Selim. Once there they meet Zarak who instantly recognizes the woman by her patch. Nekla tells Zarak that his job has already been done a long time ago. She apologizes for his father's death, but she adds that it had to be done. Zarak claims that the man wasn't his father and asks the reason for the visit, to which Selim furiously answers that he must stay away from Zelis. The boy stares at him confused, Nekla leans on him and says she can give him money, but he must stay away from the girl. Zarak utters no words, he has no option otherwise the police will be warned. Then, Selim approaches him and while improvising a threat, grabs Zarak's face but the boy easily shakes him off and throws him to the ground. Nekla warns him one more time to keep away or she will come back but this time not alone. Zarak now in his room chuckles tearfully while reflecting on what has just happened. He now knows that Zelis is the baby of Nurtan and Mustafa, and despite having been warned he is willing to see her again. Zelis is lying on her bed, sad and hurt by her adoptive father's words. All of a sudden, Zarak shows up right next to her side in the bed. She tells him how she's feeling, and that her heart hurts, to which Zarak replies this means that weakness has left it. While looking deep into his eyes, the girl in tears asks him to take her away. Unfortunately, they aren't discreet at all, and leave evidence that they fled which is later found by Mr. Hacky. When he realizes this, he gives Nekla a mistreatment right on her damaged eye. At that precise moment, she remembers how they met. The man who seemed to be Zarak's father attacked Nekla in a dumpster and left her there. Mr. Hacky helped by giving her food and shelter and when she felt better, they thought of a revenge scheme. Once they took the life of Zarak's father, they agreed to be faithful to each other. Up to this time and after the continuous threats from Mr. Hacky to Nekla, she feels betrayed. 
What we see next is the girl and the boy sleeping cuddled in the car. Zellies wakes up and gets down to see the sunset and Xerox does so. With this lovely view, hugged on a pleasant hill, they share a honeyed look and Zellies asks him where they are going. The boy answers that they are going to start a new life. The girl affirms that is going to be like in fairy tales, to which Zarek replies kidding that they would be kind of different, because he'll introduce her to poverty. But it doesn't matter if they are together Zellies is ready for anything. In the police station, Haki, Salem, and his son talk about Zarek's background. They find the boy has charges of petty crimes and is registered with no name, just Zarek. Then, Kenan walks into the office and says that two guys there claim to know Zarak, the thugs who have chased him on several occasions. Haki and Salem discuss that the boy and Zellies have to be found by them, otherwise, they will lose the inheritance, properties, and everything within a few months. They finally rely on Zellies' mobile phone to find them, if she keeps her phone they could be localized. After a long car ride, Zarak and Zellies arrive in the sunflower fields. The girl's cell phone rings and she receives a message from her friend Meltem, in which she sends her best wishes and apologizes for having told Salem about her affair with Zarak. Once in the fields, Zellies enjoys playing with a group of sheep. While Zarek admires her beauty and looks at the house of Mustafa and Nurtan, he then joins Zellies smiling sappily. Sitting under a tree, the youngsters rest for a while. Zarek asks her if she likes it there and the girl replies that if that is what poverty looks like, she loves it. The boy laughs and with a mocking tone asks her if her magic genie can grant her wishes, referring to himself. Zellies says that she really thinks he has powers. He climbs walls and windows and appears when she thinks of him. The girl laughingly mentions that he can probably fly too but is hiding it. Zarek admits it, continues to make jokes about it, and they both laugh. Then Zellies mentions that it would be nice if he could fly. That way he could take her to touch the sky together. The girl pauses and says that they could also escape every time they feel sad. Zarek keeps quiet and while stroking her hair tells her that he can't fly, but he can give her the thing she wants most. Zellies continues to joke but Zarek actually means to take her back to her real family, the one that kept hoping and was always waiting for one way or another for their little girl to come back. Then, he tells her to make a wish, Zellies closes her eyes for a moment and says she wishes he would bring her mother back. The girl mentions she always wanted to know how a mother's love would feel. Zarek stands up and asks her to wait for him. Zellies is confused but Zarek insists that she waits for him as he heads to the house of her parents. But at that exact moment, two suspicious cars appear behind the girl. Something is about to go wrong. When is halfway, Zarek turns backward and sees a horrible scene. Two guys are grabbing Zellies and getting her into one of the cars. The boy desperately rushes there but it is too late. He can't reach the car. What is even worse, the second car is at his back chasing him and he gets caught as well. Back in the city, we see Zarek trapped in the trunk of his own car. Then, Semel is in a room with the fainted Zellies waiting for Mr. Hacky and Nekla who soon arrive. Hacky asks for the girl and the guy. Semel explains that he put her to sleep but is still unconscious. Regarding Zarek, Semel says that he is in the trunk of the car downstairs and asks, what to do with him, to which Haki replies that he should wait until the next day, and that his father will tell him how to proceed. Zellies's adoptive father and Nekla get into the room where the girl is. The man orders Nekla to stay there until Zellies wakes up, and finds out if she knows anything about her real family. Then, Haki heads towards a Glaston room where Semel is having a shot, and tells the boy that he has had enough. So he and Zellies will get married on the next day, as soon as the girl comes to her senses. Semel raises the drink to show his approval. Back in the room, Nekla has fallen asleep and by the time she wakes up, she sees a nervous Zellies desperately trying to open the locked door. When the girl realizes her adoptive aunt is awake, she shrieks in terror but Nekla covers Zellie's mouth with her hand and tells her to calm down, she won't hurt her. Nekla also claims that she wants to help and that she must listen to her words, because Haki's men could come at any moment. She tells Zellies that she wants to say something really important to her, but she must not scream. The girl exceeds and in shock listens to the woman's story. Nekla explains that Mr. Haki's wife was terribly ill but she hid the illness, because she wanted to have a kid before she died. That's why she got married to Haki but the man only cared about the woman's wealth. Later on, she got pregnant and in order to protect the baby's health she quit taking her pills, but things went wrong. Unfortunately, neither she nor the baby were able to withstand the labor. What Haki didn't count on, however, was that the woman had made a will about her money. In it, she explained that the inheritance would be for the baby and would be given to the child. When the child was married but if anything happened to the child, not only the money but also Dilruba's properties and her entire inheritance would be donated to charity, leaving Haki with nothing. As they needed an heir and there was no child, Haki and Nekla decided to kidnap a baby. At that moment Nekla confesses Zellies was the kidnapped baby and that Mr. Haki is not her dad. 
The girl sighs tearfully and refuses to accept such an uncomfortable truth, but the moment is interrupted by someone knocking toughly on the door. Nekla advises her to do whatever they ask her to do and play dumb, and that way they will get the money and leave her alone. Zellies cannot contain her tears and keep on crying when her adoptive aunt opens the door. Mr. Hackey is the one knocking and when he enters the room, the poor girl feels even more terrified but to her surprise, this disgusting man pretends that nothing happened and just claims that he worries about her safety. He adds that's why he has always kept her inside the house by his side. Then, the manipulative Mr. Hackey affirms that he does not want to do anything that could make her happy, kisses the girl on her cheek, and leaves. Nekla and Zelly stay in the room sharing a terrorized look, both fear what can happen to the girl. Obviously, Hacky is blatantly lying. He has arranged every detail and prepared the marriage documents with Selim and Selim. They only need Zellies to sign those papers. At that moment, Selim knows the exorbitant amount of money they would be receiving by consuming the marriage. Selim talks to his father and asks what to do with Zarek who is still downstairs, to which Selim answers that guy is a thief after all, so it deserves to be thrown off the roof. Selim also recommends putting stolen goods in Zarek's pockets just in case, and also adds that they are neck deep so he must not allow anyone to get in the way. Now in the room, Nekla is brushing Zelly's hair and getting the girl ready for the wedding. She is still in pain from what she has just found out and asks Nekla who her mother was, but the woman can't help her, she does not know who her mother was. Next, we see two Salamis guys that take Zarok, who has their hands tied behind his back, out of the car and is carried to the roof of a building where Selim, and the two thugs are waiting for his arrival. Once there, Selim catches and approaches him at the edge of the roof and asks if he is ready to fly. But Zarek is not paying attention to him because he notices that in the opposite building Nekla is with Zelis. Then, with the help of his lackeys, Selim mistreats the boy but he is a good fighter so he can't give the mistreatment back. At that moment, Selim gets a call from his father ordering him to hurry up so he grabs Zarek and gets him to the edge one more time. There, Selim tells him that if he hadn't been such a pain in the neck, he would have given her after a while, showing how expandable is Zelis for him. While ironically chuckling he then says that he would love to take over him but he will need energy for the night, Selim also says to the thug that they will have to wait until it is quiet to push Sarak, and then leaves. However, this is not Sarak's end because he has a penknife hidden which he uses to cut the ties. Selim comes back with Haki and his father right before Zelis walks into the room. The girl already knows the whole truth and now distrusts everyone but has no choice, but to sign the papers. Selim greets her with a broad smile but when he wants to touch her cheek the girl turns her face away, and that really angers Selim and Haki. Everyone has already signed the contract but Zelis, and now is her turn. She looks for complicity in Nekla's gaze but there is nothing to do. Haki gives her a pen and we see that she is about to sign. On the roof, Zarek is freed from the ropes and while the thugs encourage him to jump off the building, he remembers Zelis words about flying and touching the sky. The young man in love plucks up his courage and runs to the end of the roof and jumps towards the opposite building directly to the room, where the deal is being closed. Zarek goes through the window and when Zelis realizes it is him she can't believe her eyes. Suddenly, an enraged horde breaks into the room, they are Zarek's friends from the neighborhood, who had been recruited by Meltem to avoid the marriage and could enter the building thanks to Meltem having persuaded Kenan. While the mob is destroying the place, Zelis approaches a completely wounded Zarok, who tells her he managed to fly and get her. The girl helps him to get up and when they are leaving the room, Nekla tells Zarok to take Zelis to her mother. They go to the parking lot, and with the help of Zelis, Zarok walks to his car and gets in but this time Zelis will drive. When they are a few meters from the exit, a car appears and crosses their way. Then, the driver gets off, and we realize it's Selim. He wants to stop them from running away but Zelis does not fear at all. The girl puts on her seatbelt, and Zarek does, so Zelis steps on the accelerator ready to flee at any cost. When he is about to be hit by the car, Selim jumps to the side and the girl crashes straight into the car. Selim falls to the floor of the parking lot and gets terribly injured, but the girl and Zarek escape without looking back. Now on the road, Zelis is fed up with that life, so she takes off her wedding ring and throws it through the window. Zarek congratulates the girl for what he has just done but she is worried about his injuries and claims that he must be taken to the hospital but he refuses. Zelis asks the boy with tears if he is taking her to see her real mother but he remains silent. The police arrive at the building and capture Zarek's gang. Selim is put in an ambulance and while her father furiously yells at her, Meltem only pays attention to Kenan so she runs toward him to hug and kiss him. Nekla sees the whole panorama and with a delighted smile on her face leaves relieved. It is late at night, Zelis and Zarek are about to get to the house of the girl's parents but Zarek, almost passed out asks her to stop the car. The girl stops the car but when Zarek tries to get down he only can crawl. Zelis is really preoccupied and tells him that they must go to the hospital. 
The boy tries to calm her down by saying that they will be found there. The girl gasps desperately and asks if he knew about her life story. Zarek pauses, with a suffering look. He leans on Zeli's chest and tells the girl how much her mother suffered. Zeli's asks sighing how he knows that, and at that moment the boy confesses that he was the one who kidnapped her when she was just a little baby. Then, Zarek collapses so Zeli's cries desperately for help. Mustafa and Nurtan listen to the call for aid and the man goes to their assistance. The next morning, Zarek wakes up on a bed full of bandages. He looks to the side and sees that in an adjoining bed Zelis is still sleeping. Above her, she sees a picture of Nurton with her as a baby in her arms and smiles. Outside the house, Mustafa and Nurton argue about the state Zarek came in. The wife is very worried because she couldn't see Zarek but her husband replies that he doesn't understand what happened. He only knows that the young man arrived in a mess and that the vet had a hard job trying to cure him. The wife insists but Mustafa tells her to take care of breakfast, so Zarek can eat something when he gets up. A few moments later, the boy appears, and a surprised Mustafa asks him what he is doing up. Inside the house, Zelis is just opening her eyes, but she jumps up when she sees that Zarek is not with her, so she looks out the window and sees him talking to the man. Nurton enters the room, asks her how she is feeling, and with a motherly, warm smile tells her that she is protected there and has nothing to worry about. She offers her a hearty breakfast and with a soft voice mentions how beautiful she is. Zelis feels very welcome, thanks her, and tells her that this place is very nice. Then the woman tells Zelis that she will be outside and mentions once again how beautiful she is. Zelis and Nurton have a very strong connection and it is noticeable that they are mother and daughter. In the sunflower field, Nurton meets Zarak and says that he is in pieces, but congratulates him because the girl he arrived with is beautiful. Zarak looks at her and asks her to apologize for everything he put her through, but the woman doesn't understand what the young man is talking about. Zarek finally adds that the wait is over. Inside the house, Zelis looks at the picture of Nurton and the baby, and notices that the girl has the bracelet that Zarek kept in his house. At that very moment, he remembers that the boy was going to take her to his real family and realizes that Nurton is her mother. When Zelis goes outside, Zarek is giving Nurton the bracelet. They both know the truth and the wait is really over. The two run towards the long-awaited meeting, the one they suffered and waited so long for. They hug each other tightly and laugh tearfully. Then Mustafa arrives and can't believe his eyes, the three of them join in a beautiful, never-ending embrace as Zarek looks on in both excitement and relief. Back in the present, we realize Zarek is in prison. The children ask why is he there so Zarek explains that he has taken things from others, but he promises not to do it again. Then, a guard interrupts to tell Zarek he can leave. He says goodbye warmly hugging the guy and the kids. Outside, Zelis is in Zarek's car waiting for him. The boy approaches, they both share a glace while smiling. Finally, they get in the car and joke a bit while driving to the neighborhood, but this time they are truly free to start a new life together.